I would like to thank CONMED, uh, Professor Alessandro Castagna, and Xavi Planas for their kind invitation to talk about DASH in this uh, Shoulder Instability in Pandemic Times webinar by CONMED. So what's the problem? Why is DASH useful? Uh, in the landmark study by Sheen and co-workers, they found that glenoid defects of 15% or more of the anteroposterior glenoid width should be considered the critical bone loss amount at which soft tissue bank art repair cannot restore glenoid translation. Specifically, it restricts rotational range of motion regarding external rotation and leads to an abnormal humeral head position, particularly a posterior inferior and medial shift in maximal external rotation. Indeed, at the mean follow-up of 61 months, Decker and co-workers found that the glenoid bone loss of 15% or more was an important risk factor for recurrence of the soft tissue bank art repair. So it was found to be very important to know the cutoff value for the number of instability events that correlate with subcritical glenoid bone loss. And Dickens and, other, and co-workers found that there was a 100% recurrence rate in patients with subcritical glenoid bone loss after arthroscopic bank art repair. On the other hand, uh, Saha and uh, co-workers found that uh, 13.5% of glenoid bone loss led to a clinically significant decrease in the WASI scores consistent with an unacceptable outcome, even in patients who did not sustain a recurrence of their instability. But we have the bony transfer procedures and the Latergy procedure. However, uh, in subcritical uh, glenoid bone loss, the complication rate of these procedures may be unacceptable, ranging 30%. This procedure, as well as the bank card procedure, does lead to a loss of external rotation, even though it's lower, and there is a reduced location rate, despite being lower and the bank card producing a two times higher risk than the latter J. Another option for subcritical glenoid bone loss that has been proposed has been the arthroscopic bank card repair with an ILSAX reemplissage. However, in bony defects of more than 10% in patients under 23 years old, the group of Professor Boileau, Cavalier, and co-authors found that there was a high risk of a failure and reoperation after this procedure, and that one third of the athletes that played high-level contact sports were not able to return to play at pre-instability level. So again, why is that useful? Well, in subcritical glenoid bone loss, ranging from 10 to 20%, DAS has been shown to significantly decrease anterior glenoid humor translation when compared with bank art repair and with no loss of range of motion, particularly external rotation. In another biomechanical study with glenoid bone loss of 13%, DAS was shown to be significantly stronger by 16.3% when compared with the bank art repair. So what is DAS and how does it work? In this procedure, we don't use the conjoint tendon or the coracoid with the conjoint tendon and transfer it. Instead, we use the long head of the biceps. So because we don't transfer the coracoid and the conjoint tendon through the subscapillary split, we do not risk damaging, for instance, the toracolacromial artery. We do not risk injuring the musculocutaneous nerve by traction. So what will the long head of biceps transfer through the subscapular tendon split achieve? It's going to achieve the same effect as a Latergé procedure, a sling and a hammock effect. When we transpose long headed biceps through the subscapular split, the long headed biceps is going to lower the subscapularis when the shoulder is in the first degrees of abduction. And this is going to produce what is called the hammock effect. At a higher range of abduction, the long head of the biceps is going to have a sling effect. So it, because it's more horizontal, it's not going to allow the anterior translation of the humeral head on the glenoid. This is the sling effect, and it's different from the hammock effect. In 2018 and 2019, two different arthroscopic regional techniques for performing the DAS were published in arthroscopic techniques. One was a, an inlay technique performed by Philippe Collin and Alexander Laderman, and the other was an onlay technique performed by Oleg Milena and Bruno Toussaint. Other authors were interested in this effect of the dynamic anterior stabilization, 
and published a case report for a situation where they felt there was a contraindication for the latarge, which was a recurrent shoulder dislocation three years after bank heart repair uh, with a subcritical gland on bone loss and no heel sac lesion and a musculocutaneous nerve palsy. But this was an open technique. This year, we published the preliminary results in our first three cases of uh, DAS using a modified technique, all arthroscopic using all suture anchors. In our modified technique, we shuttle the long head of the biceps until it reaches the anterior glenoid rim using a double double pulley technique. One of our first cases, which was three years ago, was a patient who had already suffered an acromial cervicular rockwood grade five dislocation previously, and then he suffered two traumatic events of shoulder uh, glenohumeral dislocation. We were afraid of the previous tunnels for the stabilization of the chromoclavicular joint, so we didn't want to do a large procedure. And this patient had a critical glenoid bone loss, which was 17.3%, uh, so it was a non track bipolar lesion. And we performed a DAS in this patient, which is who is doing very well at six months, one year, two years, and almost three years now. We have extended the indications as other authors have, and in this case, we did it in an hyperlax patient beta 8 out of 9, uh, and we do um, clean the rotator interval through the anterior cannula portal, and then we excise the MGA gel to expose the subscapularis. We mark the spot of the two anchors are going to place, and then through the anterolateral portal, we release the transverse humeral ligament until we can dislocate the long head of the biceps medially. We then uh, perform the subscapularis tendon split with the aid of a switching stick placed in the posterior portal, and we're always viewing through the anterolateral portal so that we don't damage any uh, neurovascular structure while we perform the subscapularis split. So when the split is adequate, we implant 1.8 millimeter all suture double loaded with two suture, number two sutures, which is a why not flex uh, conmat anchor, which will allow us to have eight, eight limbs of sutures that we can then pass using a suture passer. In this case, it's a spectrum auto pass to pass all eight suture limbs through the long head of the biceps. When all eight suture limbs are uh, through the long head of the biceps, we're going to tie two knots. The first knot with one blue and one black suture, so different uh, sutures from the superior glenoid anchor, is going to be tied and is going to be the first double pulley knot that we see in this image now. And then we use a blue and a black limb of suture to tie the second pulley knot from the inferior glenoid anchor. By this time, the long head of the biceps is going to be dislocated and ready to be tenotomized. We use an ablator and we tenotomize it from the labrum. And then we're going to pull on the four opposing limbs of the sutures so that the long head of the biceps reaches the inferior, anterior inferior glenoid rim. We can give a nudge with a suture passer and then we tie the remaining knots. In this patient, we did not have to do a bank cut repair, but we reinforced it. It was an hyperlax patient. And then we test it. It does not dislocate anymore, the shoulder. And then we check through the anterior lateral portal that the long head of biceps has a good course through the, delt, through the subscapillary split. And we're happy with the procedure. So in conclusion, when do we use DASH? So it's used in chronic anterior glenoid removal dislocations in patients with limited or subcritical glenoid bone loss and or a slap lesion and or in hyperlax patients. We do have a small short-term series, but the clinical outcomes are very good. We have no redislocations or apprehension in our patients with a very high patient satisfaction with this procedure, but we do need larger and longer-term series to establish these conclusions. So in our opinion, what are the advantages of DAS versus Bankart and versus Latarge? So versus Bankart, the dynamic anterior stabilization produces a hammock and a sling effect, which also happens in Latarge. 
There is no loss of external rotation, apparently, from the clinical results and biomechanical studies versus the Vanguard and the Lauder J. Compared with Vanguard, it decreases the anterior glenoid remote translation in patients with subcritical glenoid bone loss, ranging from 10 to 20 percent, this has been shown in the biomechanical studies. And also, we can deal with this procedure, we can deal with the slap lesion because we're tenodizing the long head of the biceps to the anterior glenoid rims. So versus the Vanguard and versus the Lauder J. It does have a delayed return to play. We cannot allow these patients to return to play before six months, but we do not have hardware or neurovascular complications. We use soft tissue anchors, so no hardware, and we don't injure uh, the musculocutaneous nerve, or we don't have that risk in this procedure versus Lauder J. We only use three portals for the arthroscopic procedure, and there is no need for specific instrumentation. And we invite you to, if you want to look it into our technique in detail, we have another patient case report published in VUMAD, and we have the published case series in JVJS case report of our first three patients, and we expect to publish our longer series soon. Thank you for your attention.